want to show you this. So this is a site called, let me go ahead and open this up for you guys. This is a site called the right side, uh, God, what the fuck are they called? <laughs> the right side network, right side, um, what the fuck does the B stand for? I don't know. Anyway, this is another sort of, um, another ripoff kind of Fox News wannabe, you know. Uh, anyway, and we've got some video here from these fucking morons where they're going to show what it actually looked like there in New York. So here's the big ass crowd, right? Here's some tweets from right side business, whatever the fuck they are, network, RSBN. Showing Marjorie Taylor Greene getting swarmed as she tries to exit her vehicle. So let's make this a little smaller so I don't get uh, copyright struck. So this is uh, this is her, sw you know. Now, remember she said that there were Trump supporters in the crowd. Remember what she just said? She just said, oh, there's a whole bunch of Trump supporters and they were hidden. They were like, you know, they weren't wearing red hats, but they were there, right? Let's uh, see what it looked like here. This is 35 seconds long, so we can just watch this whole thing. Right. Not seeing much in the way of protesters, are we? Man, I'm hearing some anti-protesters. But it looks to me like these are reporters. Right. She's getting swarmed, poor, poor baby. Yeah, there's maybe one or two people there cheering for her, right? <laughs> you did hear a couple of people cheering. But, uh, yeah, it doesn't look like very many protesters were there at all. Looks like a lot of them were just, uh, you know, reporters there. And I really like how this looked, you know, how this looks right here. Let's make this a little bigger now. Marjorie Taylor Greene gets swarmed as she exits the vehicle to attend Valley. You know, it's like, you know, pretty sure that uh, that goes with the territory. You know, if you didn't want to get swarmed, you probably shouldn't have shown up there. Should have known that there would have been every reporter on Earth would have been at this event. I mean, it is historic for the wrong reasons, you know. It is the first time that an ex-president has ever been arrested for anything. So that's fucking historic, right? So what did you expect? I don't know. I think she was expecting to, to go there and really kind of start another January 6th. That's what I thought. That's what I think she was expecting. I think she was expecting to see thousands and thousands of Trump supporters and is a little butthurt that they didn't show up. Here's her giving a speech. Do we need to make this small? Yeah, I'll make it because I want to, like, you know, I don't know, like, you know, these, these people seem like the kind of people who would, like, copyright strike you, right? So we'll just make it small so they can't copyright strike me. Guys, and back up. here's our actual speech. Guys and cameras. All right, All right ladies and gentlemen, one more round of applause for Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Look how many goddamn reporters there are. <laughs> There's the AP over here. Here's a guy with a fucking sign saying Trump should be in prison. <laughs> Way to go, man. So here's now now listen to how noisy it is, right? And all this stuff. Let's let's go ahead and continue. You hear that? Everybody's like, shh, quiet, all this stuff. Can't hear a word what's going on. There's whistles going on. Here's the thing. The whistles were actually given to, um, it was a Trump supporter walking around giving out whistles to people. And they were talking to him, and he's like, you know, make some noise, make some noise, right? And then, uh, the, and I saw this on TV. I don't have the clip in front of me, but 
basically the guy that was giving out whistles, somebody asked him, like, hey, did you know Marjorie Taylor Greene was here? And he's like, who? <laughs> like, he had no idea who she was. And he didn't know that people were using his whistles in order to drown her out. So the whistles were actually a Trump supporter doing this, you know. And it's like, oh, no, I guess uh, someone used it for uh, used it for good. Continuing on. See, I love how you just can't understand a word she's saying. Like, you could barely understand her, and there's just, like, noise and whistles and people telling her to fucking leave and, like, yelling at her and stuff like that, and... It's beautiful. It's beautiful, folks. I'm here to protest and use my voice and take a stand. Every American should take a stand. This is what happens in communist countries, not the United States of America. Once again, doesn't know what communism means. <laughs> right. What she... She meet what she's doing is she's confusing, of course, communism with authoritarianism because she's using those two words like they're symptoms or uh, uh, synonyms, symptoms like they're synonyms, of course. Excuse me, it's late at night. I should be going to sleep pretty soon. You know, I'm tired. But uh, that's what she's doing because she doesn't really know what communism actually is. She just thinks that it's anti-American, and of course, anything that's anti-American must automatically be authoritarian to her and uh it's funny because she doesn't actually understand you know how donald trump is probably the most authoritarian president we've ever had <laughs> right i mean he's definitely um spearheaded a a fascist movement in this country which has been revived in in a way that we haven't seen since before world war ii that's, uh, you know, it is unusual to have white supremacists walking around in the streets, you know, demonstrating and shit like that. That's an unusual thing, you know. It's not something that's that's always been around in the country forever. It's like, no, this is something over the last 50 years that we haven't seen to the same degree that we're seeing now, right? That's thanks to Donald Trump. Donald Trump emboldened these fucking people. People like Proud, the Proud Boys and shit like that, right? You know, we didn't have. That's not a thing. If you went back to the fifties and sixties and seventies, there weren't groups like that. There weren't these fucking brown shirt assholes, right? Groups like that were on the decline. You know, things like the Ku Klux Klan and shit like that. They were on the the decline in those eras. Don Donald Trump sort of reinvigorated these assholes, right? In the 1980s, 1990s, they were virtually gone. You know, you did see lots of things like militias and shit, th that kind of thing in the 1980s and 90s, right? So I guess maybe not completely gone, it just sort of changed into a different form. But yeah, you didn't see militias marching in the streets. That's the thing, though. You didn't see, like, people like Patriot Front. Right. Not since that that's something that you would see like in the early twentieth century, like pre World War Two. You know, back before back before fascism was like you know, people understood what fascism was. Right. I did an entire stream on that, by the way. Early uh, fascist movements in the twentieth century, you know, things like the Silver Shirts and the American Bund and and another group called uh, another group called um, Make America First. That's where that name comes from. The name, you know, the America First thing that comes from a pre World War Two fascist movement, literal fascist movement that like wanted they their aim was for us to ally with the Axis powers, to ally with uh, Germany and Italy. This is not a joke, right? <laughs> I 
The irony, of course, escapes people like Marjorie Taylor Greene. She probably has no fucking idea about the history behind this kind of stuff, right? Because she's a goddamn moron. And to her, you know, <clears throat> anything fucking, uh, anything left of hunting the homeless for sport is the exact same shit as communism, is the exact same thing as authoritarianism. She's a fucking idiot. We have to take a stand against the injustice, the corruption, and the communist Democrats who are taking our legal code and twisting it, manipulating it, and perverting it into something it was never meant to be. Donald J. Trump is... She might have a point there. It was never meant to, um, you know, indict former presidents probably because the founding fathers never thought that there would be a former president that would be as blatantly corrupt as Donald Trump you know they probably thought like the like here's an example right the the emoluments clause right this is the clause in the constitution that says that a government official is not allowed to profit while they're in office they're not allowed to use the benefits of their office to personally profit themselves or their businesses, right? And this is the reason why, for example, in the past, all presidential candidates, um, you know, released their taxes, or why uh, Jimmy Carter had to sold his peanut farm, for example, right? Donald Trump very famously didn't do that. He very, very famously held on to his, his business. He didn't sell his business. He didn't put it in a blind trust. He didn't do any shit like that. He said, oh, I gave it to my kids and let them run it. And then it'll be there when I get back, right? That's not what other presidents before him did. At the very least, they would put their businesses into what's called a blind trust. That is, somebody else runs it. They have no input on the day-to-day -day operations, shit like that, right? They can't, then the idea is that they shouldn't be able to do anything that personally benefits their business. Donald Trump didn't do that. And as a result, Donald Trump has probably had the most corrupt, like, administration, like, ever, <laughs> right? Because of that, you know, like, say, for example, Jared Kushner walked away with a $2 billion payoff from the Saudis. $2 billion this motherfucker made, right? Like, the, the Trump organization, like, in general, throughout the Trump presidency, made millions upon millions upon millions of dollars. He would constantly do shit like, like, hold government events at his own hotels and then overcharge for rooms and stuff like that constantly constantly there's there's story after story after story of of that kind of thing right of him self or his business profiting from his his actions as president right constantly there's there's so many there's so many reports of that so many stories of that it's not even funny did they do anything about that? No, because there really isn't much of an enforcement mechanism because the Founding Fathers thought that would be enough that, that the, the American people wouldn't elect somebody as corrupt as that. Which kind of goes to show that the Founding Fathers were not gods. They could not see the future. Right. And they relied on this idea that the average citizen would have a sense of civic duty. And unfortunately for them, your average conservative doesn't give a flying fuck about civic duty. <laughs> right. So that's why our country's so fucked up. It's like uh, naivety. In some respect, that's not the only reason why, but in this respect at least the naivety of our founding fathers does not lend well to the uh, current political climate moving on this is innocent this is election interference the DA Alvin Bragg is nothing but a George Soros funded tool 
Yep. Okay, first off, it's not election interference because we are not anywhere near to the election. The election doesn't happen until next year, right? Donald Trump is not even the candidate yet. Okay, he has not the official Republican candidate. He is not. He's the front runner for it, but he's not. He's not uh, become the nominee just yet. So no, it's not election interference, right? If it happened two weeks before the election, that might be interference. But it's not election interference, right? Alvin Bragg, you know, is not being controlled by the Democratic Party. There does, at least there does not seem to be any evidence of that. If you have evidence of that, please, anybody, if there is actual evidence of that, please make that evidence public. And let's arrest everybody involved, because that would be highly illegal. Number three, the idea that Alvin Bragg is controlled by George Soros is also nothing but an anti-Semitic smear, right? George Soros, of course, is the go-to smear when it comes to anti-Semites. Even though George Soros is, uh, you know, German and uh, was what? How old was he? 13 during the war or whatever? They, and the fact that he's also Jewish, right? They like to call him a Nazi. I don't know how that shit works, right? Apparently he was in some kind of youth group when he was 13. And, but how can a Jewish person be part of a Nazi, of a, of a Hitler youth kind of thing? How can that happen? Well, it's almost like he had to sort of hide in plain sight. You know, I'm going to look that up because I'm not exactly sure. Let's see. George Soros Hitler. Was he part of the Hitler Youth? Photo depicting George Soros as a Nazi soldier untrue. Let's see. This is the AP News. There you go. I like how all I got to do is one fucking Google. <laughs> <laughs> the very first thing that comes up debunks the conspiracy theory. Hmm. Claim Democratic philanthropist George Soros was a Nazi soldier. False. A photo said to be George Soros as a Nazi soldier is actually a photo of Oscar Groening, former SS sergeant at Auschwitz. The facts. Uh, okay. The accountant of Auschwitz. Soros, who was only j just nine years old when Hitler's army invaded Poland, was not a member of the Nazi party, despite what the photo said. Soros, who was Jewish and Hungarian, was 15 during the Nazi occupation of Hungary. He would have been too young to join the Hitler Youth. Oh, I guess so. I guess he wasn't part of the Hitler Youth. Well, there you go. An organization that recruited and trained 16- and 17-year-old boys to fight. So, yeah, I guess George, Fo George Soros wasn't part. See, I, even I was wrong about that. I'm glad I looked that up. There you go. You know, that's what happens when you take the time to investigate stuff, when you take the time to Google things, when you take the time to check your facts, is that you learn things and then you become correct when you, you know what the correct thing to say is, right? I'm glad I took the time to educate myself right there if only marjorie taylor green would do the same thing so of course getting back to that george soros is not controlling alvin bragg uh what it is is that there was a political um group that soros donated money to who then went and donated money to alvin bragg so that is the same kind of of uh kind of um political funding that happens all over with with um you know billionaires of all types you know that's that exact same kind of thing where where say uh, a you know rich patron will um will donate to like one political action committee or another or something like that that's something that happens all the time on the right wing so to say that you know that Alvin Bragg is being controlled by George Soros is just a lie. It's just a smear. It's an anti-Semitic smear put out by fucking Nazis, pretty much.
<laughs> right. Because every time you connect uh, George Soros' name with something, then that's basically, you know, them trying to say that the Jews are controlling shit. That's George Soros is essentially just shorthand for evil Jewish cabal of, of uh, space lizards. Right. When it comes to conspiracy theories. So don't believe that shit for a second, please. Moving on. They told for the Democrats to try to hijack the 2024 presidential election. This is a travesty. All right. This is starting to make my fucking hit her, but you can see what's going on here. So this is only six minutes long, and she ends up having to leave because it's just too loud. Right, so let's get rid of that, because there's one more thing I want to show you guys before we end this tonight. We're getting close to the end here. I'm going to have to end at 12, because I'm fucking tired. But before we do that, I want to play a little bit of this interview. This is Marjorie Taylor Greene. And you know what, I'll put this down in the in the uh, chat for y'all, so you guys can see this on your own here, if you want to. Let me just go back over here. Here's the chat, and that's where that is. So, I don't know who this weird-looking, sort of old, like, geeky-looking dude is that is, like, interviewing her is. I don't know who that is. But um, I do want to listen to a little bit of this before we end. So this is after the, uh, let's go ahead and make this a little bigger there. All right, seems like. This is after Marjorie Taylor Ring got pretty much chased out. <laughs> so she shows up, right? The arraignment is a total shit show. I mean, you guys saw it. You know, it was loud as hell. There were people shooting their whistles off. Even though she's screaming in a bullhorn, you can't understand the hell, what the hell's going on. You couldn't see her. There's too many people in front of her. There's like a billion reporters and like maybe like three Trump supporters at the entire thing. And she was only, you know, and I think her plan was that she thought it was going to be this huge sort of Trump rally thing. And that, you know maybe uh, people would go nuts and then she could kind of use this to like, you know, get a little bit of fame. Because remember, she's, Marjorie Taylor Greene is, is trying to position herself to become the vice presidential nominee. At least that's the theory out there. The theory is, is that she really wants to be the vice president. Think about that shit for a second, folks, man. And how fucking scary would that be if Marjorie Taylor Greene became the vice president? I mean, she was like, one fucking, like, McNugget-induced heart attack away from, like, the presidency. Imagine Marjorie Taylor Greene as the president, with her finger on the button, sitting there just waiting, you know, with her, like, thumb over the button, ready to nuke Russia, like, sitting there, you know, speaking to Jesus and shit, going, you know, when, God, please, God, tell me, when, Lord, when do you want me to end it, you know, ready to, like, you know start fucking Armageddon. <laughs> Just imagine that. Oh my god, what a fucking nightmare. What a nightmare. Right. That's what she wants. So, and please, you know, also please remember this is look at her look at her face. She's enjoying herself. Even though she just went to this huge like rally and just got fucking her ass handed to her didn't get the uh, didn't get the response she wanted, right? She's enjoying herself. She wanted this. She, you know, <laughs> she flew down there for a reason. And you know, there's no such thing as bad publicity. Even though, well, maybe here this is kind of bad publicity. Maybe this made her look like a fucking idiot. So, I don't know. Maybe there is such thing as bad publicity. But still, you know, let's let's keep all that in mind when we listen to her talk here. Like one of the only safe places, spaces to be here in New York City is in a car right now, joined uh, with Congressman Marjorie Taylor Greene. Uh, I couldn't put in words what we just went through about 20 minutes ago. I, I knew the media was here. We knew there was a crowd here, but I did not think they were going to respond like they did. Well, you know, honestly, it was getting through the press. That was the hardest part to get to. How did they respond exactly? I mean, people were peaceful, right? Like, nobody, like, you know, I didn't see any shoving, even though she had to, like, 
like yeah like she just said oh it was getting through the press there are too many like reporters nobody shoved her nobody pushed her nobody threatened her right nobody threw anything at her nobody hit her in the face with a pie nothing like that nobody hit her with a milkshake remember that remember the milkshake thing <laughs> right remember when uh you know activists would like hit some fucking like chud asshole with a milkshake and then on the right wing they started making up bullshit about it started saying stuff like all oh, those milkshakes are filled with uh quick lime and quick drying cement it's like no they fucking weren't <laughs> right there was that that was another conspiracy that that just had zero truth to it nobody hit anybody with a milkshake that had fucking cement in it get the fuck out of here that was dumb remember that stuff like nobody did that to her here nobody threatened her at all nobody even like called her any names i mean you heard some people saying she's like marjorie go home what are you doing here fuck you like nobody even really like did anything like super rude to her you know those were just people protesting i mean hey that's the use your first amendment right you know well the first amendment goes both ways you know not everybody's going to support you when you're a politician, right? I really kind of think that she was really expecting there to be a much bigger turnout. Like, I think she was expecting it to be January 6th is what I think, you know. I mean, I don't want to speculate, you know. I mean, she did say peacefully protest, so maybe she didn't want violence. But kind of seems like she was going for it this whole week, you know. So, you know tweeting stuff talking about uh about the second civil war and how she was uh you know that one speech she gave saying that oh i was uh, taking a tour of gettysburg when i heard about yeah right sure you were you know please check out if you don't know what i'm talking about check out my prior video from last week with her from saturday you know where she talks about you know when i heard when i heard about it i was taking a tour of gettysburg just making that nice little that that nice little allusion to a second civil war you know so it's like i'm kind of thinking she might be a little butthurt here but let's let her speak in her own words continuing to the park bench we didn't have a stage set up this was a true protest everyone um it wasn't organized and funded like like you see the left how they organize and fund but the hard part was getting from the <laughs> without any proof or without even a comment what does that even mean this wasn't organized like the left organizes like the fuck are you talking about like how the left organizes a protest like why what's wrong with the way that the left organizes protests i mean are you saying that like the left wing you know the left knows how to get their shit together when it comes to a protest and know how to set up a stage know how to have speakers know how to keep it from devolving into a total shit show like what you just had is that what you're trying to say <laughs> like and, uh, and you know and i i also like how um she just has to say that and it's an insult you notice that you notice how any of these people charlie kirk was doing the same shit in the last video all they have to do is say the left does this and it's not even an insult sometimes and it, it's sort of like but you know that that's how it's coming across to their viewers, you know. This isn't a protest like the way the left protests. You're like you know that that's that's coming off as an insult. It's like, but she doesn't give any insight into what the fuck she means at all, in the slightest. No context, no whatever. You're just already just automatically supposed to assume that it's bad, you know. It's like a cult. It's it's like when they talk about Democrats when they talk about the left. It's like they're talking about Satan. You know, it's the same way that in a church, preachers talk about the devil and Satan and witchcraft and shit. You know? <laughs> I don't know. Am I wrong here? I don't think so. Moving on. Car uh, to, to the actual park bench inside the park, inside the safety of the park where... NYPD was set up to protect uh, protesters. Remember, this is a peaceful protest. We're using our constitutional rights. But yeah, we were swarmed, uh, unbelievably swarmed. And then, of course, guess who was out there, Brian? Uh, you, you saw them, uh, the, the people that bring their whistles. They bring all kinds of instruments to make loud noise. And what it is, is it's assault. 
it's assault on your ears. It's, it's um, you know, it causes audible damage to your ears. And it's actually against the law here in New York City. Okay, okay, okay. First off, blowing a whistle at a, at a protest is not assault. That's bullshit, okay? It is not assault. You want to know what assault is? You remember that time Marjorie Taylor Greene kicked a woman in the back of her legs? You remember that? Because there was a woman walking in front of her, and like she didn't like it, so she just kicked her. In fact, you know what? I'm going to look that up. I'm going to look up Marjorie Taylor Greene kicks woman. Uh, what do I, I bet you I can find this really quick here. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Nope. Here it is. Marjorie Taylor Greene appears to kick activist outside of the Capitol. Let's move that over here. You guys remember this, right? Let's see. Uh, hang on one second. You guys remember this happening? So this is only 16 seconds long. Let's just make that super big so you guys can see it. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And let's make that full screen. Right here, watch it's in slow motion. She walks up, there's a girl walking in front of her. Marjorie Taylor Ring just kicks her. <laughs> right? You remember that? Let's watch that one more time. See? China. Hey, shut up. No, go back. God damn it, fuck you, YouTube. Well anyway, fuck that. Anyway, you saw it, right? Let's just exit this. Fucking fuck you, YouTube. All right, let's go back. See that? First off, she wasn't blocking a member. So these two guys on the side here. You're blocking a member of Congress. She's walking in front of her. That's not walking in front of someone, right? Is not obstructing that person, right? Marjorie Taylor Greene walks me, up. You're block kicks her. Right, She's right here. Excuse me, excuse me. It's like, why are you saying excuse me when you're moving? You know. And plus, there's all this room over here. She could just walk around her if she fucking felt like it. So what does she do? She just kicks her in the back of the legs. Right. There's another video out there somewhere. Let's go ahead and turn this off. There's another video out there somewhere of another view of it where it's a little more, like, obvious what's going on. That's what assault looks like. All right, that's actual assault. Blowing a whistle when someone is at a protest trying to give a speech, that's not assault, right? And nor is it illegal. It's not illegal at all in the slightest, right? Do you remember that Joe Biden giving the Dark Brandon speech? You remember that? The Dark Brandon speech where he was at that uh, Navy building, whatever, and like was right in front of the, and it was all red. And everybody was saying, oh, it's the dark Brandon thing. And he was like, you know, people were photoshopping him to look like fucking Emperor Palpatine and shit. Right. Remember that speech? All through that speech, there was some protester, some asshole, who was within earshot, who was blowing on a, like a, like he had a siren, and he was singing let's go brandon over and over and over some asshole that you could totally hear him let's go brandon let's go brandon like over and over and over right did the secret service go and arrest that guy did they remove him right did this did the cops come and beat his ass and take away his siren no right because that's not illegal protesting is not illegal right making loud noises disrupting somebody's speech especially when it's out of protest that shit is not illegal okay i'm actually surprised that nobody did anything when joe biden was speaking when the president of the united states was speaking nobody did anything to that protester i'm actually surprised that didn't happen i would expect them to at least remove that protester from the building or to remove him from the area right but they didn't do it because that's not illegal. So 
I think Marjorie Taylor Greene was just butthurt because people used the whistles for something that she didn't think. Remember, the whistles were given to people by a Trump supporter. So, yeah. Kiss my motherfucking ass, you ridiculous fucking harpy. Moving on. Yeah, and what you saw also was, you know, and I pointed this out earlier, we love our men and women in uniform here in New York City, but if there's 35,000 officers on call, I want to know where they were at. Because I don't think we had enough police presence there to get you through there. That, that, that mob was pushing in. If we would have had a little bit more police presence at that park, I think it would have made things a little less chaotic. Um, why are the police required to, like, what does he want the cops to do? He wants the cops to disperse the protesters? He wants the cops to control the crowd? Why exactly? I mean, were, were, was the crowd violent? You know, they were just jammed in, packed closely and tightly, right? I mean, most of those people there, you saw it, folks, right? Those were reporters. Those weren't protesters, right? Those reporters were there to get photos of the president, the ex-president, because he's the f first president to ever be fucking arrested, right so that's a historic thing so why you know what were the people doing wrong there you know what because marjorie taylor green couldn't walk through them like they wouldn't part out of her way and allow her to like stride through like you know because she had to like struggle to get through a crowd of people well fuck her let her take her turn <laughs> right what the fuck was she doing there anyway you know, like, what? Because she wanted to come up and rile up the crowd? Get the fuck out of here. These are people doing their jobs. Like, I don't understand how where that even fucking comes from. Yeah, I definitely think so. Well, according to uh, the mayor, Mayor Adams, who actually warned me by name. I'm a member of Congress, elected to represent Georgia's 14th district. I'm a one of Trump's top supporters. I've endorsed him for president. I will always stand and defend President Trump. Uh, he's the greatest president of my lifetime. But they, the, the mayor, Mayor Adams, warned me and named me, telling me I better behave myself, but yet they sent their... I call him henchmen. Yeah, he did, because for days before this, you were screaming and hollering about how you wanted people to come protest. And the mayor was trying to avoid there being another January 6th. So here's the thing, Marjorie, right? You don't live in New York City. These people are not your constituents, right? Just because you're a house rep doesn't mean that you are above the law or that everybody likes you right they're under no obligation to do anything you say or to accommodate you at all right no the cop i mean what are they trying to say do they want the cops out there to defend her so that she to to part the crowd for her to make the crowd shut up so that she can like talk go fuck yourself Right? Go to Georgia, right? To your constituents that elected you, that you should be looking out for. Why the fuck is she in New York City? Okay. You know, when you when you get elected to go to Congress, you have a job, and your job is to vote in the best interest of the people who elected you to Congress. Right. Your job is not to go to another state that has nothing to do with the people that elected you and pull whatever dumbass shenanigans you're doing here. Right. This is sort of like if Gavin Newsom would have like shown up there or something like that. Like I'd be saying the same thing. It's like, what the fuck is he doing there? He's the governor of California. He shouldn't be in New York. Right. Same fucking thing, you know. How about you take care of your own constituents? That's that's the thing about Marjorie Taylor Greene is that she doesn't have to do that. She doesn't doesn't actually do any work. She has she introduced any bills? Like no. For her entire first term as as a house rep, she didn't do shit. They took her off of all of her committee assignments, right? 
She didn't do anything. She had no function there, you know. All she did, she was there. You know why they keep her around? Because she's really good at raising money. That's what she does. That's what she does for the GOP. She raises money because she says inflammatory bullshit. She does ridiculous stunts like this. And all of the fucking bigoted-ass MAGA chuds out there give them a shitload of money. Right? That's what she's there for. <laughs> I mean, who is this fucking person? That, like, ah, uh, God. She's like the Karen, like, queen of the Karens who, like, accidentally failed upwards into becoming a fucking, like, congressperson. You know? The real, the real shitty thing is that she's in such a conservative district that she's probably going to be in Congress for years. That's the really disturbing fucking thing. Is that she'll probably be in Congress for, for a very long time. Fucking ridiculous, folks. They sent the mob out today with, with all their noise and screaming horrible names at me. And, and they're the Good. party of hate. They call us hate and, and say we have hate speech, but they really are the party of hate. Um, but that's where they were. New York police, let's talk about that for a minute. They have 35,000 police officers here in New York. Now, just to give you a comparison, the Border Patrol has around 19,000 Border Patrol agents for our entire border, southern border and northern borders. Yeah, New York City itself has like 8 million people in it, <laughs> right? So let's just, uh, let's, uh, you know... Let's take a look at how you know population of New York. Eight point four six eight million people in New York. All right. What's the population of New York City? Okay, hang on. New York City. New York City has eight million people. All right. I thought that was New York State. So what's the population of New York State? New York State has 19 million, 19.84 million. Okay. So just New York City itself, 8 million people. And they only have 35,000 police. <laughs> 8 million people, 35,000 police. Seems to me that they should have more cops, don't you think? I mean, then again, the New York Police Department has a budget in the billions. Like, the New York Police Department is like, like has like a billion dollars as, <laughs> as part of his budget. So yeah, maybe uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know enough about it that I should be talking shit either way. But that seems like a very just for that size number of people. That seems like a very low number of cops. So I don't know. But don't you think with that many people that they should be out, I don't know, policing those people, right? Making sure that gangsters and, and like mobsters and shit aren't out like murdering and stealing and stuff instead of standing around defending your dumb ass. <laughs> like, you know, don't you have secret service people or some shit? Don't you have your own security people? You know, you're not there in New York City as part of any official government function right like who does this fucking person think she is you know is she part of some government function no she's just there to like scream at the crowd through a bullhorn you know was the crowd being violent no shut the fuck up then how about that <laughs> fucking ridiculous so just to understand the difference and i think that's a real shame i think the border patrol should have at least thirty-five thousand border patrol agents but here. here's what we're doing so i haven't left you notice how like the border patrol like that had nothing to do with anything what does that even have to do with what's going on here nothing at all she just brought that up because it's a dog whistle right like that's i mean th that's another thing that you'll notice like her and like lauren bobert and matt gates like they say the exact same shit over and over and over. They always, they talk about the border. They always say like the corrupt Democrats. And then they'll talk about abortion. We're the party of life. Stuff like that. And then they talk about like the border. Like they're like broken records. They, they have, that's all they have on the shelf. 
is the the exact same three fucking issues over and over and over. They don't even really talk about abortion so much because they won that one. I don't. You know what? I, I'm I'm sick of this shit. I can't I can't stand to listen to this woman for one more second. So we're just gonna go ahead and close this. Right. Shut the fuck up, Marjorie. Anyway, I wanted to get to some more things, but it's already midnight, and I'm fucking tired. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Dinesh D'Souza. I wanted to look at Michael Knowles' reaction, but I think this is going to have to be good enough for now. Maybe we'll save those guys for um, Saturday. Because I'm sure this isn't over yet. I'm sure we're going to still be seeing the... Uh, but hurt maga chuds just lose their fucking minds filling their diapers like little tiny babies shitting their pants in rage and that kind of thing i'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing that all through the remainder of this week and most po possibly into next week pretty sure that uh you know is something that we're we're going to be getting these reactions probably for the time being so we'll have lots and lots more material to cover in future streams so let's save them for what for next time getting pretty close on this wouldn't you say here's our uh full sort of alien dude getting kind of close just have a foot and some hands maybe we'll color this one you know I have to figure out what I want him to hold here. I have to draw some kind of ray gun or something here. But it's looking pretty good. So anyway, folks, let me turn on my laptop here. I have some social media stuff out there. If you like what I do, you want to give me some money, let me put this down in the chat for y'all. This is my Esty shop. I have comics. I sell prints, things like that. This is a Lovecraft print. You know, these are 11 by 17 coffee-stained prints. Each one comes out a little bit unique, right? Stuff like that. So if you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my Esty shop there. I also have DeviantArt website here. All of the uh, artwork that we do on the channel shows up on the DeviantArt site. Here's one that I just finished um, the other day. This sort of, like, plague demon-looking thing, right? So... That one actually turned out really well. I tried to make him look like he was smelly. I, I hope you could smell. I want you to be able to smell this uh, this image here. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah, please check me out there if you like my artwork and you want to see more. I have a webcomic. It's called Hwanja.com. Fun for the whole stupid family. It's got ninjas. It's got talking ducks. It's got guys getting their heads chopped off. Stuff like that. also have a Patreon. See the link down in my link tree. Um, I'm going to put all of my old streams that uh, expire on Twitch. They will all go up on Patreon in their entirety. So if you want to see, um, you know, if you want to, if you're interested in seeing any of my streams that are now gone from Twitch, that's where they're at. Else, they are on the YouTube channel. And if you're watching on YouTube, please like and subscribe. If you're watching on Twitch, please follow me. I will be back here next Saturday. Thank you all so much, anybody who watched tonight. I'll be back Saturday at 11.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Thank you once again. All of you have a very good night. Adios. Hello, folks. If you like what I do and you want to support the channel, please consider buying something from my SD shop, supporting me on Patreon, liking and subscribing, and checking me out across my social media links listed below. Thank you all so much, and see you next time.